Hi everyone, in this video we are going to cover the clip model proposed by OpenAI, Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training. The main idea of clip is based on natural language supervision. So they use self-supervised pre-training based on the natural language as the learning signal. They pre-train their model on a very large dataset of image text pairs that they collected from the public domain. Clip model has several use cases, one of which is zero-shot transfer. So in this video, we will see more details on how Clip is trained and evaluated. First, let's discuss the motivation for the natural language supervision in the context of image representation learning. So far, most computer vision models are trained in a supervised manner, but obtaining the labels and annotations for supervised training is usually expensive, and therefore, there are limited amount of data available for supervised learning. On the other hand, there is unlimited amount of raw text that can be used for natural language supervision. So to summarize the advantages of natural language supervision, first is that it's easier to scale compared to the supervised training. And second, with natural language supervision, we automatically connect image representations and natural language representations, so this enables several potential applications for multimodal image and text data. For pre-training the clip model, they collected a dataset of 400 million pairs of images and text, and they called this dataset Web Image Text, or WIT. For building such dataset, they gathered 500,000 queries based on all the words in the English Wikipedia that were repeated at least 100 times. As a result of this, they got uh, image text pairs like this example shown below. Also, in order to balance the dataset, they included up to 20,000 pairs per query. Natural language supervision for image representation learning is not a new idea. Clip is actually inspired by these two models, Vertex and Convert, that both share the same motivation. Since obtaining label data in specialized domains, such as medical data, is difficult and costly, so instead they want to pre-train using natural language supervision with unlimited textual data. So first, let's see these models briefly. The Vertex model is composed of a visual backbone and a textual head as shown in this figure. The visual backbone extracts features from the input image and the textual head receives the features from the visual backbone and predicts the caption word by word. After pre-training the Vertex model, this model can be transferred to downstream tasks. However, the major drawback of this approach is that it is difficult to predict the exact caption since there are various possible captions that can go with an input image. So as we'll see, convert and clip models, they both opted for a different approach. The convert model is specifically proposed for medical images, where getting the supervised labels for images requires domain experts, and therefore it would be very costly. Two example images and their description is shown on the left and a sentence that is randomly sampled from the corresponding medical document of each image is shown below them. So Convert tries to learn image representations using natural language supervision. The first difference between Convert and Vertex is that here, the visual and the textual networks work in parallel, in contrast to Vertex. For training this model, they use contrastive loss that tries to increase the cosine similarity of representations of images and texts from the correct pairs. Now, moving back to the clip model, we saw two different ways of natural language supervision. Vertex tries to predict the exact caption, while Convert uses a contrastive loss that tries to maximize the similarity of corresponding representations. As we said earlier, predicting the exact caption is difficult. Therefore, Clip follows the approach of Convert instead. So given a batch of image text pairs, Clip's objective is to find the correct pairings between images and texts in the batch. In other words, which text matches with which image with higher probability. Assume we have a batch of image text pairs, so that means 
we have images i1 to in and text t1 to tn on the left it shows the correct pairings in the batch so each image is correctly paired with the corresponding text but there are also n squared minus n incorrect pairs as shown in the right so the goal here is to make the representations for the correct pairs to be similar and the representations for the incorrect pairs to be dissimilar. Here is the diagram and the pseudocode for training clip. The visual and textual encoders work in parallel, similar to the convert model. Feeding a batch of paired images and texts, the visual encoder outputs representations i1 to in, and the textual encoder gives t1 to tn. We normalize these representations with L2 and perform dot product between the normalized image and text representations and as a result we get a matrix of similarities as shown here. Note that the two labels is on the diagonal of this matrix so we can construct an array of labels for correct pairings simply with this np.arange function. Then we compute the cross entropy loss on this matrix once for the dimension 0 to get the loss for the visual encoder and then on dimension 1 of this matrix for the loss of textual encoder. And finally we take average of these two losses. Now let's look at the architectural details of CLIP. For the image encoder, CLIP explored two families of models the ResNet-based models and VIT-based models. They experimented with five different ResNet models as shown here and they applied some improvements by replacing the global average pooling with the transformer-style attention pooling. For the VIT models, they experimented with three models, two VIT-B models and a VIT-L. In addition, they also added an extra version of the VIT-L that is pre-trained at higher resolution, 336 pixels, and in fact, this model has achieved best performance. For the text encoder, they use transformer model with architectural details as in GPT-2. For tokenization, they use lowercase bpe and a vocabulary of size 49,000. For efficiency reasons, the max sequence length is capped to 76 tokens, and as output of the text encoder, they extracted the features associated with the token EOS for end of sequence for the final text representations. Now moving to the experiments to showcase some of the capabilities of CLIP. There are three sets of experiments conducted by the authors. Zero-shot transfer, where they investigated the capability of CLIP for classification on completely unseen datasets representation learnings with transfer learning, and finally evaluating the robustness of CLIP to natural distribution shift. For the zero-shot transfer, they set up the experiment as follows. So imagine we are given an unseen dataset which includes a list of images and their class names, and we want to use CLIP for classification in a zero-shot setting. So we first extract the set of all possible class names and reuse the image text pairing capability of clip to map each image to its correct text, which is in fact its class name. While the initial experiments using only class names for pairing showed promising, but the authors also used prompt engineering techniques to further improve the results. So instead of simply using the class names for the text, we can wrap them into a more descriptive text phrase like these examples that can be tuned for each dataset. For example, on a dataset of fruits, we can build text phrases like this. A photo of apple, which is a type of fruit, or a photo of orange, which is a type of fruit. And try to match each image with one of these possible text phrases. Another trick is to use ensembling with different text prompts, like building multiple prompts to describe the attributes of each object, like its size or color, and finally select the one with the highest average score. 
Here is the results of the zero shot transfer applied to several datasets and compared to a fully supervised model serving as the baseline that was built by adding a logistic regression on top of the ResNet features. As you can see, the green bars here indicate that CLIP is outperforming the supervised baseline model in several datasets. And in some cases, like the top three datasets by more than 20%. However, we should also note that for some specialized domain datasets, such as the satellite imagery datasets or fine-grained medical data, the performance of CLIP is lower than the baseline. The next experiment is representation learning, for which they decided to fit a simple linear classifier on top of CLIP's features. This figure compares the performance of different CLIP models shown with the star with other existing models based on the computational cost on the x-axis and average score on the y-axis. And as you can see, the best CLIP model, VITL, which is pre-trained at higher resolution, 336 pixel, outperforms all existing models. And the last experiment is on the robustness of CLIP features on their natural distribution shift. This figure shows some example images from the class of bananas in ImageNet as well as five other datasets, such as ImageNet V2, ObjectNet, and ImageNet Sketch. The performance of zero-shot clip is compared with the ResNet model that is trained on ImageNet. And as you can see, the zero-shot clip model outperforms ResNet by up to 75%. This result showcases that zero-shot transfer models such as CLIP are more robust to such natural distribution shifts. So that's all for the video on CLIP for contrastive language image pre-training. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more videos.